We are busy with question three from the Eastern Cape September 2013 uh, matric trial paper for um, RT paper one, which is the practical paper, and we're dealing with the general programming um, array text file type question, and we're dealing with a string grid and a 2D array in this question. In the first part, we loaded the data from the text file into the 2D array, and I haven't been able to test it yet, so hopefully this question will help us test it, because we're going to display the data now, and we must just display it in the string grid like it's got over there. So there we're just displaying in the string grid, in this button display, so there's our string grid. Obviously we're starting from the second uh, column, which is column 1, because that's column 0, and that's the second column. So let's go and just see if we can do this one. First thing is, we're going to have to use some sort of loop where we go through um, the columns and the rows. So I'm going to have an R col and an R row, which are type integers. Those are going to be our looping variables, which go through the array. Um, so let's start. R col is the columns. Or should I do R row first? Let's do R row first. That will go from 1 to 23, because there's 23 rows. Do. And then, for each row that we do this, we've got to go through each column. So our col is going to go from 1 to 10. Do. And the reason why I've got 23 and 10, because if you remember from the first part, my 2D array is 1 to 23, 1 to 10. Yeah, so let's leave it like that. So there we go. So basically what I'm going to do very simply, is I'm going to say this string grid 1 dot cells. Okay, now here's where we've just got to be 100% sure of ourselves. If you notice there, when I type cells there, we've got a, I think it said col first and then row. So it's the column value that is first. Now, if, if you remember our row, is the rows, which is not, that's why I called it R row, because it's easy to determine it now. Um, and the column is the column. So the first value that they want in the string grid is which column are we referring to. So we start with R col. And the second value will be the rows. So that's why it's R row. If you're not too sure, if you can't remember, just remember string grids work in alphabetical order. So column first, then row. Now that value is going to equal whatever's in R2 tickets. Tickets. Okay, now here's where we've got to be careful as well. Now, the value that goes from 1 to 23 is actually the row value, because our first, remember, if you remember when we declared the array, if I go back here, it's the 23, 1 to 23 first, then the 1 to 10. So the loop that goes from 1 to 23, our row, is the one that must go first here. And then after that will be the 1 to 10, which is the R col. And this is often what happens when you display in a string grid, is the combination you use in the string grid will be inversed when you get the values from the array. But also remember, this is an array of what? Integers. And this is a string grid, hence the word string. So therefore, we've got to convert from an int to a string. Now, as I said, I'm not sure if this is going to work, and we're going to test it out, and hopefully it does. If it doesn't, we can obviously just tweak and change either this program, this part of the program or the previous one. So let's have a look and pray that it works. So we first get the information, which is extracting the data from the text file, then we display. Boom. Okay. So first of all, we've got some success. Straight away, I can see it's displaying everything nicely. There we go. My only concern is this. Um, if I look at the data over here, the Sarah is 43227, which is correct. But if you notice, Jack, unfortunately, does not have any data there. Mm, so how do we handle this? Okay, now let's try recall here. We know that that is row 0, actually. If you remember, that's the 0 row. So I'm actually displaying in the 0 row. I mustn't go from the or the, the each row. mustn't go from 1 to 23. It actually must go from 0 to 22. That's technically what should happen. So when I display in the grid, although I want to go from 1 to 23, I should, in the row is not going to be row 1. It'll, whenever I put the first row in, it'll actually be in row 0. When I put the second one, it'll be row 1. And that on. So it's actually every single row minus 1. Because remember, the first row is a 0. Then the second one's a 1, 2. So we, we want to go from 0 to 22. But we've got a loop that goes from 1 to 23. And the reason why we want 1 to 23 to stay there is because we've got our array going from 1 to 23. So let's try that. I don't know. If, I don't think that's going to solve everything, but it might solve some of the problems. So let's let the information display. Okay. 
Displays everything fantastic. Although you'll notice the last row is all noughts, and you'll also notice that Jack is 43, 2, 27, but in our diagram it's 1, 5, 65. Mm. So maybe there's a problem with that whole zero issue in the previous question. Let's just recap here. Okay, now if you remember, my array was 1 to 23. So over here, if I look here, I start the row being a zero and I only change it or increase it at the end there. So the first time it runs through this while loop, it's not actually putting it into a value in the 2D array because the 2D array does not have a value zero for the row. It's the first one is one. So if I start this with a one, then it will put this into row one. Let's see if that works. I might need to do more tweaking. And Euretha, I mean Rika, it is done. There you can see all the uh, numbers all nicely put in, very similar to what we did here. But remember, as I said, um, the, I think the examiner or the moderator or whoever set this paper uh, made a little mistake that they forgot the last value. And you can see the last value is always missing. So there we go. I think this is better. So I'm assuming that the next values that we come across could also be wrong compared to the values that they give over here. So let's move on to 2 or 3.3, the number of tickets sold, write the code to calculate how many tickets were sold. So basically we're counting how many tickets were sold. Now each of these, it doesn't mean that's one ticket and that's five tickets, that's just the ticket number. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we've got a ninth one now. And we carry on counting all of these tickets. So basically we're only counting it when there's a value in the string grid that's not a zero. So basically I want to basically go through this entire uh, string grid and just count the values that aren't zero. I think that's what the best way to do this. And we display it using the show message. So let's go close this program. We're going to go into the ticket sold. Again, I'm going to probably need some sort of variable that is an R row and an R col. You'll find with 2D arrays, you're always doing the same type of looping. So even if you don't know how to do the question, put in the loops, get the marks, make sure you get everything covered. And we do an account, so therefore put in your count. So I'm going to call it uh, ticket count and all of these are going to be of type integer and before we start I'm going to set my ticket count to zero just to initialize it so it starts off being a zero and then we do our loop for our row how did we start the last time just use your yes our row goes from 1 to 23 do and then for our call goes from 1 to 10 do easy marks just don't be silly like i've done before and put a, a semicolon after the do then you're just doing that for loop not the for loop is doing one to 23 nothing it's doing nothing 23 times which is not what you wanted to do okay so basically i'm going to check each value if the string grid now we can either check the string grid or we can check the array either one should be fine i'm going to check the array so array tickets Value. Now the first value is the one that's going from 1 to 23, which is the R row. And the next one is the value going from 1 to 10, which is the R column. If that is equal, sorry, the other reason why I prefer working with the array, because I know it's from 1 to 23 and 1 to 10. If I worked with the string grid, I would have to work out, okay, one of them's a 0 to 22, it gets quite complicated. If that value is not equal, to a zero. So not equal, for those of you who've forgotten, is the two symbols like that, the less than, greater than symbol. It's like a diamond. So if you're not too sure what um, not equal to is, then just remember Rihanna, shine bright like a diamond. There we go, there's the diamond. And then we put a zero. If it's not equal to zero, then we know that it is a valid ticket number, so therefore we must increase the ticket count. There we go. And then once we finish doing that loop, we can just simply show a message. And oh, terribly spelling, terrible spelling there. Show a message, and we've got to display what's our message? The number of tickets, but the word tickets sold after. So, so tickets sold, and in front of that, remember the space, we will put the value ticket count and then say ticket sold but remember tickets count or ticket count is a integer and this show message is displaying a string so we must convert from an int to a string please work 
I pray very hard during these exams. Display, display it. Yes, it's all good. Tickets sold. Okay, 156 tickets. Now, if you think about it, the tickets that were sold, they originally told me the answer was 133, but they forgot about the last element in each of the rows. So there are 23 values that they left out. So my value should be 23 plus this 133, which is 156. So I know that it is correct. And that. If I look at the next question, the lucky draw, that is a six marks. It is quite a, a, a meatier question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for the next video. This is video is going to be quite lengthy with all the questions that we're going to do. But I'm going to try to separate that into a separate question um, and maybe tackle 3.4 and 3.5, although even 3.5 is quite long. But yeah, I'll do that in the next video. So hopefully we can cover it then. Why not go to our YouTube channel, um, go check out Mr. Long Video Education. We've got lots of videos for IT students and CAT students as well. So have a look at videos, like them, leave your comment, leave suggestions, and hopefully we can get some information um, that will help you in your exams and help you in your studying for IT and CAT.